Alright, here we go, the best TT position on a road bike in history. Rem going in a pool. Now we've all seen his position on a time trial bike. I've got a video about the top five time trial bike positions. I'll love it in the description. But anyway, everyone knows his position is class. But look at the man. Look at the man go. This is probably one of the only important TTs that's done on a road bike, really. I mean obviously San Juan isn't that important for Ramco, but for a lot of South American riders, it's the biggest race they do. It's a two dot pro. It used to be called two dot HC and now two dot pro. You can see the sort of gears he's pushing. He's, you know, he'll have a 58. Oh, he's got disc wheels pretty close to the um, the frame of his uh, SWX Venge. Um, I've always wondered if they change crank length because I know some riders like to have a short crank length on a TT bike. Like I run 165s. Um, I don't think Renko does. Looking at the hip angle, it doesn't look like he has a particularly short crank. So I think he's probably on 170s, which is standard road and TT. But I'm not 100% sure. And just his, his helmet as well is very, very good. But, you know, you can see here he's incredibly comfortable in this position. And he just looks like... Um, He's born on the TT bike, and you know, obviously, his hands aren't in as high a position as he could be. But everything else is like really, really similar. Um, and you know, obviously, he's got the European national, uh, European champions skin suit on him as well. Uh, but he looked a lot more comfortable than most people in this position, which I assume that he's he's ridden a lot of this in um just in road races generally. Um, the other position that he did, I think, when he was giving his wrists a little bit of a rest, was this. Obviously, error position here. This is slightly uphill as well, so obviously error isn't as important, but he's still going 45, 50k an hour. Um, but you can see, you know, that that is generally shown as more error than being in the drops, where you have your your hoods on, um, your hands on the hoods and sort of in, trying to get an error position. 36k an hour, you know, error is still very, very important, but obviously not as important when he's going 50, 60k an hour. Um, I, I excluded the hill from this footage because I didn't really think it showed anything. Um, he pedaled with a slow cadence up the hill. He's more like an 80 cadence rider up the hill climb. And obviously on, on the flat, his TTs when he was junior days, obviously he spanned like 110 cadence because the maximum gear you can have as a junior is a 52.14, which about over anything over 50k an hour is about 100 cadence. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, so he's very used to that. And you can see that's obviously passed on to his time trial ability um, as a senior when he could obviously have a 58.11 or whatever. Um, we come up to the final part, but I think it's just yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. You can see who rides a TT bike more often, who's used to riding an aerodynamic position more often. Like if you're doing a zone two ride, just try and get an error for an hour. Try and get on the you know, most aerodynamic position you can get on your road bike for an hour. And if you can hold that, like you know, obviously doing zone two, then in a race, you know, it just it just helps a lot. These are the winner. This is the uh, leaders at the moment. You've got uh, Oliver, and and then you've also got Polish national champion, which is Bodnar. It was a bit of a hilly course. It didn't suit them too well. People, Gano was another. Italian national champion. Um, I'm not really sure why I was showing this footage. Oh, here we go, because Remco is just about to come in. It was sort of a downhill, uphill finish. Um, the voices are not downloaded. John Bevan, it's yours truly, Charlie Carlton Cycling. Couldn't sort out a video from this, so you just got my tremendous voice instead, which I hope you do all enjoy. But we've got a couple of videos that um, are coming up. So you can see this is the difference Conti Riley rides for. Assume he's the Argentinian national champion. So he has a disc wheel, but, um, you know, and overshoes. I mean, most of the tech these days is pretty... Pretty standard. Um, bar tape, don't get it. Bar tape is less aero, take it off. Um, and then also the other thing is how long people go in the extension. If you look, good time trialers, extensions that on the skis from you know minute one, like minute 10 seconds in, you know, 800 watt surge for 10, 15 seconds and then straight into the into the seat. Here he's out the saddle. It's like, mate, you're going 35, 40 k an hour here. Like if you look at good Remco, like Remco doesn't do that. I think it's it's very useful to compare, you know. People who obviously, he's not a bad time for us, he's, he looks like he's Argentinian national champion, but Remco is just a cut above everyone else. And here he is, you can see him tucking that head in as well is a super important thing um, to try and minimize your frontal area. And uh, if we want to have a look at Nairo Quintana's latest TT position, that's generally how not to ride a TT bike. Obviously he did well, but he's got numbers. But um, yeah, you can see here he's properly error on the, um, on the hoods and just, you know, flat arms, 90 degrees. To the hoods and it's all looking it's all looking nice for the remco remco monster and you can see he's sort of rocking and when he's rocking you can tell people are properly on the limit doesn't matter who you are you're going to rock slightly and that's when you know you're giving it full so anyway cheers for watching hope you did enjoy this video about remco having he smashed the time set by Sevilla by at least 45 seconds i believe it was a minute and eight seconds sorry i can't do maths um an average 47k an hour with a, with a fair climb no power data to really deliver you on the stage that was uh, that useful i think Oscar Sevilla might have done it but he was quite far off remco so Obviously, CDA is completely different and weight is different as well. So you couldn't really approximate what it was going to be. Um, it was a flat TT with 70, 75 kilo riders. You know what the CDA is going to be more or less the same. Um, but with Remco is 58 kilos. You must have one of the lowest CDAs in history, apart from maybe Emma Pooley or someone. So yeah. Anyway, cheers for watching. See you in the next one.